Hey everyone, so I thought that I would do a how-to, how to create a dried flower or an everlasting um, bouquet. Um, I will show you how I personally create it, which will be different to other florists. It might be different to what your approach might be as well, but that's all right. Just about sharing information and sometimes it's just good to know that you're on the right track if anything else so hopefully you learned something and um, if you would like to have any more little tutorials then just let me know and i'll be happy to create them for you so i thought i would go through the ingredients that i'll be working with today so i firstly have a king protea um then i've got a Banksia cone. Oh, that's just so beautiful. I also have two Banksia. <laughs> then I've also got some teasel. And these guys are pretty prickly. You'll see the thorns there. So if you hear me screeching, it'll be because of them. Then I've got some dried, um, I think, South Australian daisy is their name um, and the these hydrangea the name of these hydrangea has completely escaped my mind of course because now that I'm doing a video everything is going to escape my mind but I bought these fresh and then dried these as well as the um, banksia the teasel were bought dry these were bought dry as well, and the protea I dried myself. I've also got a palm and these bunny tails, which are get caught on everything. Then the um, preserved ruscus, and this. Uh, these are actually quite expensive little things. Um, I've cut this one because of that big gap there. And I feel like I can use this small piece as well as this long piece better. I've also got down here um, is some gum nuts, some long gum I always say gum nuts, I mean gum leaf. So I'll show you what I'll do with this huge piece and then just some eucalyptus. So the tools you'll need for this are obviously your flour, dried flour ingredients. Um, I've got a bit of twine. I've also got my snips. And I, my stuff is falling. I like to use a mirror. Not everyone does this so that I can see back what it is that I'm creating because sometimes you can see pockets of holes better. Yeah, so I'll start with the focal piece. My grip is not too tight. I don't want it to be too tight, otherwise you're, the, the looser you hold your bunch, the uh, more flowy it's going to be. The tighter you have, the more uh, small it's going to look um, and rigid it's going to look, I guess. So I haven't really prepared how I'm going to place everything. Um, I normally just look at the pieces I'm going to use. This is a beautiful shape. So I'm going to use this opening as opposed to facing it that way just because I, I love this little peeking bit there. So I'll sit that there. I'm looking at all my ingredients. I do typically, now that I think about it, add some greenery after I pick my, I guess, focal flower. So I've done a little V shape. It, things may change. So it's good to have an open mind as you're doing this. I 
I'm also doing what's called spiraling. So I'll just put these pieces down. So I've got, I've got my focal flower and I will either put flowers in front or behind. And every piece will go in front for this side and then behind, I don't know why I'm pronouncing that, um, behind for that side. And this will create a spiraled and open um, bouquet. You can have the stems straight, but with dried flowers, they will break. Unless you're really careful. So back to my same thing. So this piece, I'm just going to be playing around here, seeing what direction I want to go. Things will move, things will change. So, so far I'm happy with that. Everything, and I would say this is where I'm going to tie off the bouquet, where my little, I guess, round, that's how my hand sort of is holding the flowers. So all of this stem, all the leaves on the stem in um, a dry bouquet, I will just leave off until the end. So I can crush that and it's fine. When you're working with fresh flowers, you want to completely pull that off because it's just going to be a pain in the neck. All right, so that's what I'm going to do for now. Then I might grab my next bigger sort of important pieces. And you kind of want to start with the bigger pieces because it really fills out your um, design without having to do much. So I think I'm going to stick that guy there. Um, there's also a couple of things that um, I want to mention, which is one, you can cluster or group same flowers together. So I could put all my hydrangea here or you can dot them, you know, like this might, this could sit here. I tend to group mine, so I might put that there, just see how that looks in the mirror. But I also do like to create some echo so I might put that one there so this is grouped that's not but it's sort of opposite I don't always do this I may may even change my mind as the design goes um, grows alright now I do not want it to hurt me. Alright, so I might not use this bit yet, but while it's on my mind. So this is a really huge piece. I might break it up. So the way that I figure out how to break it up is I just look at what's going to give me the more economical pieces, the easier pieces to work with. So as you can see, got some funky lines going on. I might cut this piece, so that big piece there, and see if I've made a big mistake. Sometimes you do make bad judgments, but that's okay. Everything can still be used. So that's what that piece looks like. I'll put this piece down. So there's that piece. I will see if I can use it. Because see this little piece here? I can actually use this at the front and hook things in between what's already there. Oh no, I couldn't actually, not that time. Not well on camera. Anyway. So back to that, I'm just going to use this piece now. Uh, 
pieces of front piece. It's actually quite hard doing this on video. <laughs> So I'm ten, I tend to look at the camera more than my mirror, which I need. So I just find a place that it will look good. And I'm breaking things as I go. But yeah, I kind of like that. So this piece, I'm going to stick at the front, but I will go behind so that my stems are still spiraled. And that's where I'm going to stick this guy if you can hear things dripping and whatnot. That's all right. That's how these work. I forgot to look at my mirror. So this guy, I want him to be pushed right down because it essentially is going to be like a hole here. This is where this sits and everything's going to be built upwards. So All right, I'm just going to stick with that idea still. I thought I was going to change it, but Harder to listen video. So this little cluster of daisies, I am going to group, leave them as is. in my placement of this hydrangea but it's all a process oh yeah okay gonna get rid of the daisy now and stick the protea here because I love I love that shape This it guy is so heavy, very top heavy. And don't be afraid to pull off leaves that don't serve you. Because they don't all. You can also reuse those leaves. So you don't feel like you're wasting anything. I think I might just stick them in there for a bit. Get my banks here. I might stick them a bit higher. So many materials to use. These guys look so good in abundance. Look how cute those are. Sometimes can't see how good it is. Alright, I'm gonna squish this guy down. Yep, I'm starting to like this more. Can you see? Things will look probably funny, but they will make sense the more you add things. You can always just um, readjust things. You don't have to keep them the way you've put them down. I'm going to use my bunny tails. Oh yeah. I like them in the middle there. Bring this guy 
lower. This one I'm going to bring down because he's very wobbly, which I don't mind, you know, these bendy shapes. It gives it character. What I do like to do sometimes is put something. Ah, okay. You can see it better. And I've got something behind. See all those the stems? Sometimes it's nice to have open stems like that. But for this arrangement, I am going to pull it down so that they. Can you see that? Uh, so you, there's not too much of a gap between the darkness here and then the flowers there, if that makes any sense. I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to put my palm piece behind it so that it kind of shows that the there. Sometimes I will move um, some pieces up and down if it just you know, looks like a big mess, but kind of liking how sporadic it is there. Things dropping everywhere. Alright, so I've got this table and that use. Look at my design. Oh yeah, I'm liking this a lot. So that it's not all the same length. Might it could even bring it over so it looks. Yeah, I think I like that better. Alright. Getting there. Just trying to get everything in between my fingers. All right, a few more pieces to go. So I've got two pieces of, no, no, three pieces of this gum, the round stuff, and I've still got this beautiful piece. I'm going to put that big piece there. I'm going to have the leaves facing up. So there's this bendy bit I was trying to show you before how sometimes when you've got like a U shape um, stem like a Y shaped stem but at the U part of it um, there might be a little bit and then a bigger piece that's what this long gum bit is that's this short bit and I can sometimes if it doesn't break bring that to the front as well as have a piece at the back that is what I'm going to try and do right now. Actually, I'm also going to cut the stem because it is so I've cut this off because it's actually going to make my life easier if it's two pieces and not one. And then that piece broke again. That's alright, I can still reuse it. It does work, it just is not working for me today. Alright. 
I can stop here. You, unless you could, at some point you've got to stop yourself because you can keep adding and adding and adding. Ah, yes. So my preserved ruscus, I'm going to tuck that bit there. And this small bit, I'm going to put at the front. Oops, it's dropped. Can pull this up a little bit so that you can see the spikes. And I've wrapped it around once, and now I'm securing it at the front. Okay, so, yes, beautiful, that's done. At this point, now that it's tied, you can go around and give it a check over, so I'll push that you put this in to make sure everything's secure because things do move. You can go in and pull up some more bunny tails. Squish in more, yep. So it's, it's front facing so it's not round. It's got a top and then a bottom. It's a flat back sort of thing. I do that because I prefer the look of that and a lot of the time your arrangement is facing just the one way and so you get more like you get to see all the ingredients more uh, that's not to say you can't do it round but if you want to see a round one then um, let me know in this for yourself uh, you can measure up the vase that you want to put it into uh, I typically do two hand sizes because um, what I've, um, I'm doing posies, I'm not doing bouquets. This would be a bouquet, you know, like um, longer stems. I do posies, which typically should be the, the flower size. So everything above the um, bind should be the same length as your stem. That's what makes it a posy and what makes it a bouquet is the longer stems versus the bigger bunch. Um, obviously I don't do it true to a posy because my, uh, you know, because they are bigger, but I typically do, I will hold my stems as much as possible. So from the bind, that's where my hand comes to. And then I do two hand spaces. And so I will cut to about there. So I'll do that, not on camera. All right, so my stems have been cut. Um, obviously the stems aren't all the same length, but you just make sure that everything's, um, what it, all the long bits that are the same, are, you know, cut to the same. So this is what it looks like at a distance. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. I love flowers. Alright, if I've forgotten anything, which I never know what I'll make in these videos, but I will write them down and share that with you. Um, and yeah, 
Let me know what you think.